The United States Army in the American Civil War used two flags per regiment. The Stars and Stripes was called the National Colors. The National Colors first came into use by the United States Army during the Mexican War. Prior to that time, the National Colors was a blue flag with the National Coat of Arms, which is the eagle with the arrows and, and the olive branches, and below that would be the ribbon with the unit designation on it. Then the regimental color was the other flag used by Union regiments. At the time of the Civil War, those were blue with the National Coat of Arms on it. When a regiment was advancing in line of battle towards the enemy, the color guard would advance six paces in front of the regiment. That is so everyone to both sides of the color guard could see where they were going. They would guide on the colors, and you would read that in the books. Guide on the colors, guide on the flag, and the colonel behind them is yelling the orders to the color guard, and the color guard is basically moving as the colonel uh, has them going. It's kind of like a steering wheel. That's how the colonel drives his regiment. Besides unit colors for the infantry, cavalry, and artillery, the Union Army also used very large flags. The largest flags that they would make would be called garrison flags. These were incredibly big flags, usually about 16 by 24 feet, and they were designed to fly over fortification. They also were issued storm flags because when it started to rain, these big flags would soak up uh, quite a bit of water. So they would lower the big flag and raise the smaller flag, which is usually about 10 by 16 feet. And then you would have post flags and flags for buildings and army offices and things like that. These flags were not made of silk. They were typically made of wool bunting, a more durable material. The Confederate Army used only one flag per regiment. That was because they were using the Hardy's Tactics Drill Manual, which called for only one flag per regiment at the time. What a lot of people don't know is that the Confederate Army used more than one battle flag, the Diagonally Cross, Saltire, or St. Andrew's Cross, dubbed the Southern Cross. That's the most famous of the battle flags, and that flag came into being in November of 1861 when they were issued to what would become the Army of Northern Virginia at Centerville, Virginia. These flags were square and would remain square in that army for the rest of the war. However, the Confederate Army would use upwards of 19 patterns and sub-patterns of battle flags during the Civil War, the Western armies in particular using banners that didn't even resemble the Southern Cross battle flag. In addition to the different battle flags, the Confederacy created three national flags. The first national in March of 1861, which sort of resembled the United States flag, a blue canton, red bar, white bar, red bar, and a certain amount of stars representing the number of states that had seceded. That was replaced in May 1863 by the second national flag, a white flag with a canton that had the Southern Cross in it. And then in January to March of 1865 would come the Confederate third national flag, which was the same as the second national base league, except they added a vertical red bar on the fly end. Now, all three of those flags would actually get used as battle flags as well. In fact, the reason why they would replace the first national flag with different battle flags is because it resembled the Union flag on a smoke-filled battlefield and in the distance. However, it was the only Confederate flag that would actually see combat use from the beginning to the very end of the Civil War. The Union Army had a number of ethnic regiments. The most predominant were the Germans. The second were the Irish. A lot of the Irish flags, of course, would be green and have the harp of Aaron and a slogan in Gaelic, Aaron Go Bra, painted on the flag. The Irish Brigade of the Army of the Potomac was one of the most famous groups of Irish troops and their colors were gorgeous and shot to pieces in a number of different battles. The Irish were pretty predominant in a lot of the port areas of the Confederacy. They too would use the Harp of Aaron on some of their flags. For example, the 8th Alabama Infantry had a Harp of Aaron on one side of their Confederate First National and on the other side, to show how American they were, they had a picture of George Washington. Unfortunately, that flag doesn't exist today. So these ethnic groups would use these symbols as a point of unit pride to make their flag stand out a little bit different from the other flags used by other regiments. 